This little guy has been around since 1980 and he's still kicking and alive. And we're going to build a Pac-Man game in this tutorial. I'm Thomas Webenfark, a developer and designer from Sweden. I want to say a big thank you to Brad for giving me this opportunity to create this tutorial for his channel. If you want to check out my own channel, you can do that by visiting the link below this video. My channel is called Webenfark. So let's get started with this game. All right, let's check out the game that we build in this tutorial. So let's start it up. And as you can see, we have the classic Pac-Man moving here. And I also got some cool sounds that we're going to implement last in this game. So this is the game. I made some small tweaks to it from the original. For example, here, I blocked this corridor off so you can't move here and come out on the other side. And also this game is actually quite complex in some aspects. For example, all the ghosts have their own move algorithm. I'm going to create a fairly dumb algorithm that is based on random movement. So that's what we're going to implement here. And that's because this tutorial will be too long if we implement all the details from the original game. But we are also going to use classes. So we're going to do some object-oriented programming. I'm going to show you that. I'm not going to go crazy on the object-oriented stuff. There are room for things to change if you want to do that. Um, and that's because I'm more of a functional programmer, actually. But we are going to use classes, and I'm going to show you how to implement methods and how you use those methods and send them into other classes and stuff like that. So this is the game that we're building. And now I'm going to show you the starter files and how to start up the dev environment that I provided for you. So let's take a look at the starter files that are provided for this tutorial. The reason that I provided you with starter files is that I want to give you some initial setup and also the styling for the game, because I'm not going to go through the styling in this tutorial. I'm going to focus on the JavaScript itself. So inside the starter files, you have the finished game. That's the one, of course, that's, that's marked with finished. And you also have one folder that's marked with start here. So that's the folder that you're going to use to start this tutorial. Let's copy the path to this folder, js-pacman-start-here. And from the terminal, the console, navigate inside that folder. I'm going to clear this out. And then inside that folder, you can run npm install. And that will install parcel that I'm going to use for this tutorial. So it will give us this handy little server to use when we develop this game. And we can also use modules in our code. So that's very, very neat. Parcel will bundle this up for us and transpile it down to one JavaScript file for us to use in the browser. So that's what Parcel will do. One note, though, is that I've noticed that Parcel will occasionally freeze the game. If that happens, just close that window and start it up again, and it should work. It's nothing with the code that causes this one to freeze. It's Parcel itself. I don't know if it's my system, because I'm using the beta version of Big Sur when I record this, so it can be something here also. I've never experienced this with Parcel before. But just a little side note, if it frees up for you when you develop this, start it up again and it should work. All right, so we install the dependencies and then you can start up the dev server with npm start. Like that. And you can see here that it starts up the server and it's at localhost 1234. So if we navigate to that one, there's nothing near now except the background image and this is going to be the scoreboard. And uh, this is the start game button here. So nothing fancy going on here. And we can see that our JavaScript is working because it's console log out working here. So we're going to check out the files now. So make sure to navigate inside of your code editor. And we can check out the files. Here's the usual index.html file. And in this one, I created a wrapper div. And then I have a div for the game itself. I have a div for the score and a button for the start button. And then I import the index.js file. So that's everything I'm doing here in the index.html file. And we don't have to touch this file in this tutorial. Then I have this setup.js file. And in this file, I created some values that we're going to use for the game. So for example, the grid size and the cell size. The grid size telling us the amount of columns that we're going to use in the grid. And the cell size is the size of the cells in the grid in pixels. And then we have this const here with the directions. So these are the directions that we're going to use when the user controls Pac-Man. So we have left, up, right, and down. So the code property in this object is the key code for the key that we press. And in this case, it's left. We also have a movement property. This one is telling us 
in which direction we're moving. In this case, it's minus one, meaning that we go to the left. And we also have a rotation property. And this one tells us how much Pac-Man should rotate when we go to the left, because he starts off to the right in this game. So if we go to the left, we're going to rotate him 180 degrees, and that will make him turn to the left. So we have one of these for each direction. Then I have another const here that's called object type. So first, we can have a blank square when there's nothing there. Then we have the wall, the dot, Blinky, Pinky, Inky, and Clyde. These are the little cool ghosts that we're going to use in this game. And I love that they have their own name. Then we have the pill that Pac-Man can eat so that he can chase the ghosts and eat them. And then we have Pac-Man himself, of course. And we have the ghost. And we have if the ghost is scared. And then we have the ghost lair. And these ones we use to set different classes on the divs in the game. And then I have a lookup array for classes. And this one is only used when we draw the grid. So if you look down here, we have the level. And this is uh, an array that represents the grid. So you can see here, for example, we have the number one. That's the wall. So from this array, if we grab the index one, we're going to get the wall. And if we have two here, you can see that we get a dot. That's when we draw the grid. We're going to loop over this level and create a div for each cell. So that's what we're using this one for. So it can be a little bit confusing to have two of them, but this is also great because inside this object type, we can change the name here and it will change in this array also. So if we want to change a class name, we can just change it here and it will change in the complete game. So class list is only used when we create the grid. All right, so that's the setup. And then we have the style.css and this is some basic styling for the game. I have the square, I have the wall, dot, pill. I have all the ghosts here, you can see, and all the ghost names here also. So that's why you can check it out if you like to learn more about the CSS stuff. I'm not going to go through it more in this course. I also have a folder here with the sounds. We're going to implement the sound effects last in this tutorial. All right, so I think this is it. We're ready to start coding, and we're going to start with scaffolding out some stuff in the index file. We're going to start in the index.js file and we're going to set up some initial stuff here that we're going to need. So remove the console log here. And first we're going to import. We're going to need a level. That's the one that I showed you before that I created in this one here in the setup. This is the level. And we're also going to grab the object type because we need that in the index.js. So these are the ones that we're going to import. So level and also the object underscore type. We're going to grab them from dot forward slash setup, like that. And then down below here, we can mark it with DOM elements. So we're going to grab these ones from the index file here that I created, where the game, the score, and the start button. So we need all three of them. So go back to the index.js, and we create a const. Let's call it game grid, camel casing. And from document query selector, we select the game div. Then we have another const, and we can call it score table, also camel cased. And from the document dot query selector, we select the score div. And the last one is going to be the start button. So const start button equals document dot query selector. And we grab the div that's called start dash button. All right, that's the DOM elements. And then we're going to specify some constants for the game. So we can mark it with game constants. And we're going to have a const that we call power underscore pill underscore time. And these ones are all capital letters because they're constants. They can't change in the game here. So that's why. So the power pill time is going to be 10 seconds. That means 10,000 milliseconds like that. We can also mark it with milliseconds if we want to be extra specific here. All right, we have another const global underscore speed equals 80. And this one is the global speed for the game loop itself. Also milliseconds. So these are the ones for now. We are going to come back to this one later. And that's when we create the game board class. All right, then we have something that I call initial setup. And these are lets, these are variables. 
So we're gonna have something to hold our score. So let's score and we set it to zero. Then we have a timer and we give it the null value to start with because we don't have a timer now. And we have something that's called game win. And this one is gonna tell us if we won the game or not. So it's gonna be false to start with. And then we have another let that we call power pill active. And we set it to false. And this one is gonna be used when the Pac-Man eats, eats a power pill. So we have another one to go with this one also. Let power pill timer, because we're gonna have a timer when Pac-Man eats that pill. And we set it to null initially. Then I'm just gonna scaffold out the functions that we need for this game. So first we can create the game over function. Game over. And it's gonna take in Pac-Man and the grid. I am gonna explain this later. I'm just creating the shell for these functions now. So that's why I'm not talking more about them now. So we just leave them empty like this. So that's the game over function. And then we have another function that we call check collision. And it's also going to take in the Pac-Man and also the ghosts. And we leave it empty like this. Then we're going to have another function that's going to be our game loop. And it's going to take in the Pac-Man and the ghost. And then we have a function for starting the game. So function start game. And it's not going to have any parameters. And that's it. That's the functions that we're going to need in the index.js file. All right, so we can see when we save it that it updates here now. It's not saying working here more in the console. So that is fine. We have this code now instead. And we're going to build the game board class and draw the grid next. So let's move on and create the game board class. Let's create a new file in the root of the folder that we call game board capital G capital B and dot JS. So that's going to be the game board class. First, we need some stuff in this class. So import grid underscore size. I'm also going to remove the explorer because this is going to be long. So we have the grid size and be careful about the spelling, capital letters and underscore. Then we have the cell underscore size and we have the object underscore type and the class underscore list like that. And we grab those from dot forward slash setup. All right. Then we create the class itself. And when you create a class in JavaScript, you do it by typing class and the name of the class. So game board like this. And in the class, we have something that's called a constructor. And the class in JavaScript is just syntactic sugar for creating a regular object in JavaScript. But it's great to use classes because it makes it a little bit more structural, I think. But you could also create regular objects. So we have a constructor in the class. And we're going to send in the DOM grid to this class when we create it. So let's make sure that you have that one here in the constructor. And the constructor will run when the class is created. So we can also set some variables here that will be available in the instance of this class. And this is a class, so we use the dreaded this keyword, this dot dot count camel casing equals to zero. And this dot grid equals an empty array. And we have this dot DOM grid. It's going to equal the DOM grid that we send in when we create an instance of this class. So DOM grid. And this will make sure that we have those variables on the instance so that we can use them later. Because, for example, if we don't assign this DOM grid that we send in to this one here that's called this dot DOM grid, we won't be able to access it because this will only exist when it creates the instance of the class. So that's why I assign this to this dot DOM grid. All right, so we have created a class and we're gonna need some methods on this class. And a method in a class is it's just a function. It's called a method when it's in a class. So we have something that's called show game status. 
and it's going to take in the game win. That's the variable that we created in the index.js file to tell us if we won the game or not. And this method is used for displaying if the game is over or if we have won the game. So we're going to create a div that we're going to attach to the game board. So const div equals document dot create element. And we create a new div. All right. Then we assign a class to this div. So div class list dot add. And I have a class that I call game dash status. Like that. So I've already styled this class in the styles that I provided for this project. Then div inner HTML. We're going to set the inner HTML on this div. And I use backticks here because I'm going to grab a variable. And you do that by creating a dollar sign and curly brackets. And then you can use JavaScript expressions to create your string. So we can use this and create the turner operator if the game win is true. That's the one that's going to go to the right of the question mark. We're going to display win. Otherwise, we display game over. And then we're going to attach this to the DOM. So this dot DOM grid, this is the one that we send in here. That's the grid. So we attach this one to the DOM grid. Append child div. And of course, nothing happens now because we're creating the class. We're not using the class now and we don't have a game to win or lose. So this one is going to be used later, but we're creating it now because we're creating this class now. All right. Then we're going to create a method for creating the grid itself. So this one is the method that's going to create the grid for the game. We call it create grid and we give it the level. And the level is the one in the setup.js. It's the one here where we can define the level. So go back to the game board. The first thing we're going to do when we create the grid is to set this dot, dot count equals zero because we are going to call this method every time we create a new game, every time the player press start game, we are going to wipe out the current dot count and set it to zero. So that's why. And then we also set the grid an empty array again because the grid is going to be the array with all the positions and the DOM grid is going to be the actual divs in the DOM. So we also have to reset the DOM grid. So this dot DOM grid and we can set the inner HTML to be nothing and that will wipe all the divs out. And then we're going to create a style here in the JavaScript because we are going to create this grid based on what we have in this setup here, because we set the grid size here. So we're going to grab this value and set the style based on this one. So we get the correct amount of columns for the grid. So go back to the gameboard.js and I'm going to remove the explorer. So this dot DOM grid dot style dot CSS text equals, and I have back ticks again, so we set the grid dash template dash columns colon. I'm going to set it to repeat. I'm going to grab the grid size. So dollar sign curly brackets. I grab the grid size and then I have another dollar sign and curly brackets and I grab the cell size. And then it's also important to end it with PX. Otherwise it won't work because this is CSS that we set here. And you need to specify that it's pixels that we want. So this will make the grid dynamic based on the value that we provide in our setup file. All right. Then we're going to draw the actual grid. So we have our level that we send in. That's the array with all those values that we have in the setup.js file. You can see here this is an array. So we're going to loop through each and every one of these values. So go back to the game board. We have the level and we loop through it with a for each loop. We're going to get the square and the index. And we have an inline arrow function like that. So we run this on each element in the array. So we create a new div, document dot create element, and we create a div like that. And on that div, we're going to set some classes. 
Så div.classlist.add. We're going to set it to be a square, like that. And from the class list that we have in our setup, we're going to grab the correct class for each element. And we can do that by selecting the square that we're currently on and grab that from the class list. So for example, let's say that this one has the value one. So from the class list, we grab the index one. So if we check out the setup.js again, you can see the class list here. If it's one, we know that it's a wall. So this is how it works. We'll go back to the game board. Then we're going to set some styling on the div. So div.style.css text equals backticks. We set the width, dollar sign, curly brackets, and we grab the cell size again. And also important, and it with px. Then we set the height, colon, dollar sign, curly brackets. Oh, it's getting long here. I'm going to remove the Explorer. And I grab the cell size again and end it with PX like that. I guess you can also end it with a semicolon there. OK, so what have we done here? We're looping through each element in the array with our level. And we create a new div on each element. We set the class list to a square because it's a square in the grid. We also apply a class depending on the value we have on each square that we loop through. And we also apply some styling to set the cell size on each element. And the cell size is also something that we set in our setup file. So that makes it very dynamic. We can change those values and it will change the complete grid. We don't have to do any coding here. We just change those values in the setup. All right, we created this div and then we have to append it to the DOM grid. So this dot DOM grid, append child, and we give it the div. We also want to put this div in our array that we created up here that's called this grid. And this is because it will be easier to handle for us to have those div elements in an array. So this dot grid, push and we push in the div and that will place each div last in the array when we push it and then we also have a variable here to hold the dot count that we're going to use to calculate if we won the game so we can do that by count all these dots when we loop through the level so that means if we have the number what's the number for the dot it's the index two so if we're at the two when we loop through this array we can add one this variable here. All right, so if class list square, we're still in the loop here, so we can check that value with square. If that one equals object underscore type dot 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 dot, <laughs> all right, then we can add one to this variable here. So this dot count plus plus. So this is it. This is the create grid method that we're going to use in a second. But first, let's also create the other methods that we have in this class. We're going to have some small utility functions for us to use when we add classes and remove classes, for example. So below that method, create another method that we call add object. And this one is going to be used to add classes. But in this case, I call it add object. And this is because if you want, for example, to change this grid to use canvas or something, you don't have classes. So I call it add object because then you don't have to rename it. If we call it add class, then it would look strange if you call a method that's called add class if you have a canvas. So that's why I call it add object instead. So this one is going to get the position and the classes that we're going to add. And the classes in this case is going to be an array. So inside of this one, we apply on this grid. We have the position. That's where in the grid that we want to apply these classes. Class list dot add. And then we can spread out the classes. Because as this is an array that we can provide this method with, with all the classes that we want to add to a specific position in the grid, then we can spread them here and it will add all those classes. And then we can actually copy this one 
paste it in below and we change the name to remove object and we change this one here to remove and we use this of course if we want to remove a class in our grid then we're also going to have a method to see if a class exists in the grid so object exists position and object yeah i realize now that this one shouldn't maybe be named classes because as I said, if you use the canvas instead, it will be strange that it's called classes here. You won't notice it when you use this method, method, but yeah, you can call it something else if you want to do that. I will leave it with classes for now. Uh, all right, yeah, that's it. Let's leave it with classes for now. In this object exist, we're gonna return this dot grid and from the position, dot class list contains and we can check if that class exists and that class is called object in this one all right so this one will return true if that class that we send into this method is present on that current position all right and then for now we have one last method to create before i'm going to show you how to draw the grid so rotate div, this one is used for rotating Pac-Man on the grid. So we have the position and degrees. This dot grid, dot pos, dot style, dot transform equals backticks, rotate, parenthesis, dollar sign, curly brackets, deg. So that's the parameter here. And then we also have to type out deg because this is CSS, so otherwise it won't work. All right, then we're going to have one more method in this class, and that's one that we use when we move the characters. But I'm not going to do that one now, we're going to do that later. So for now, save this file. And we go back to the index.js file. First, we're going to import this class. We can mark it with classes up here. So import gameboard from dot forward slash gameboard. So now we can use our game board. So I'm going to create another constant here, const. And I'm going to call it game board. And in this case, it's going to be camel case because this is actually not a constant as these ones are because it's a class that can change stuff and we can call stuff in it. So yeah, it's not really a constant because it can change. So that's why I'm using camel casing here instead. And I just remember, I actually forgot to create another method in the gameboard class that we're going to use to initialize the class. So let's go back to the gameboard.js file. And just below here, we are going to create a static method. And what's a static method? Yeah, a static method is something that you can call without instantiating the class. We can call it directly on the class. It exists directly on the class. And that's great for creating a method to initialize the class itself. So use the static keyword and call this method create game board. And it's going to take in the DOM grid and the level like that. And then we create a const that we call board equals. And then we're going to create an instance of this class itself. So new, this, this will reference this class itself when we use the this keyword. We're going to give it the DOM grid. Because if you remember up here, we are specifying this in the constructor that it can take in a DOM grid. So that's the one that we specify here. And now we have this class instantiated in this board const. And from the board, we're going to call our method that's called create grid. And we give it the level. All right. And then we return the board. So if we don't want to have this static method, we can instantiate the class in the index.js file, but then we have to call this method also there. But if we create this static method, we can call this one and this will take care of it for us. We don't have to call this ourselves. So that's great with static method. That's a good use case for a static method. So we create an instance of the class and we call the create grid that we created up here. And then we return this instance of this class. Save the file. Go back to the index.js file, and now in our constants, we can call this static method. So from the game board, dot create game board, we give it the game grid and the level 
like that. Save it. And we have some error here. Yeah, and I know why we have this error, because in the game board we also need to export it. So export default game board. I can also see that I have a typo here now, the DOM grid, it should be a lowercase r for the DOM grid, otherwise it will complain. So save this one. And as you can see, it draws the grid, and I'm truly happy about that. I love when stuff works like this. So make sure to export the class, otherwise you can use it in the index.js file. So this is the grid, it successfully draws the grid for us, and we're gonna add in Pac-Man to this grid next. Okay, we have the nice little grid here now for Pac-Man and the ghosts to play around in, but we don't have any ghosts or Pac-Man yet, so we're gonna create Pac-Man now. And that means that we're gonna create a new file at the root level again, that we call Pac-Man, capital P, dot JS. And first we're gonna import some stuff. So import, we're gonna import the object underscore type and the directions for this one. And we grab them from dot forward slash setup, All right? Then we create a class, Pacman, capital P. We have the constructor again, and for this one we send in the speed and the start position. So we have a few variables we're gonna set in this class now, and we have this dot pos, it's of course the position, and we're gonna set it to start pos initially. We have this dot speed, and it's gonna be set to the speed that we give this class. We have this dot dir, and this is the direction. We set it to null first, because this is gonna change when we press the keys on the keyboard on which direction we want to move. We have this dot timer, and it's gonna be at zero first. We have this dot power pill, it's gonna be false initially. And the timer is going to be used when we set the speed on this one, because we have this variable here that I'm going to count up. And if we set the speed, for example, to 5, it's going to render Pac-Man each time it reaches 5, and then it resets this timer. And this is how we can control the speed of the Pac-Man and do the same with the ghosts later. I'm going to show you this in a second. And the power pill is, of course, when Pac-Man eats the power pill. And then we have this dot rotation. And it's going to be true. And this one, I'm going to use this boolean later because in the ghost class, I'm going to set this one to false because we don't want the ghosts to ro rotate. So I'm going to show this also later when we do the movement for Pac Man and the ghosts. All right, so these are the variables that we need in this class. Then we have a few methods that we're going to create. We have one method that is called should move. So we can call this method to check if Pac-Man is ready to move or not. And initially we don't want to move Pac-Man before the player has uh, pressed some direction on the keyboard. So if not this dot dir, then we'll return false. We shouldn't move initially. And then if this dot timer equals this dot speed, then we should move. And then we can set the this dot timer to zero again, like that. We return true because we should move. And this is all this function is going to do. It's going to tell us if we should move or not. And then outside this if statement here, we're going to add on the timer. So this is how it works. Each time we add the timer, and when the timer is at the speed, so if the speed we send in is five, it's going to return true each time the timer reaches 5, and then it resets itself, and next time when it reaches 5, it does the same thing all over again. So this is the should move method. Then we have a method that we call get next move. And for this one, we're going to send in the object exist. And if you remember, this is the one that we created in the game board this one here. So we send in this one so we can use it in the Pac-Man class. So this is the method that's going to calculate the next move for Pac-Man. So first we create a let. Remove the explorer again. I call it the next move pos camel cased. It's going to equal to this pos dot pos. 
plus this dot dear dot movement and this dot dear movement is from the setup you can see here we have the directions that's an object so this is a nested object here on the arrow left for example we have another object so we have the code movement and rotation so we grab the movement here in this one pacman so this dot dear is going to hold one of these every time it holds one of these so that's why we can grab this dot dear dot movement so that is the next move position for Pac-Man. We have the current position and then we add the direction based on the movement that we're doing. Then we're going to do an if statement here because if we collide with a wall or the ghost layer, you shouldn't be able to move inside of the ghost layer. Then we should do nothing. So if object exists, we use that method from the game board class. Next move position, we give it the next move. And we check if the object type equals the wall. If you remember the object type from the setup, it holds all the class names here. So we can check if the class equals the wall with this one. All right. So we check if the class name in this case is wall or object exist next move pos. We also check if the object type equals to ghost layer, like that. So that's the if statement. And if Pac-Man collides with a wall or the ghost layer, we set the next move position to this dot position. We don't do anything. So we just set it to the current position. Otherwise, we can return the next move. So return. And in this case, we're going to return an object. And this is the same interface that the ghost class is gonna have. So we can send it in to our methods in the game board class, for example. So we're gonna return an object and we're gonna give it the next move position and the direction is gonna be this dot dear. So that's the get next move and we're gonna use that later, so don't worry. So if we get the next move, then we have a method for make the move, so make move. This is divs in the DOM. So we can remove and add classes when we make a move. So const classes to remove equals, we're going to have an array. We can specify an array with all the classes that we want to remove. And from the object type, we're going to grab the class name for Pac-Man. Like that. That's the only one that we want to remove here because we're only moving Pac-Man and const classes to add equals we have another array and from the object type we grab the class name pacman again and that means on the current position we remove the pacman class and we add it to the new position and we return an object classes to remove and also classes to add and as this is ES6 syntax we're using, we don't have to specify a colon and type out classes to remove. We can just type out classes to remove as the name is the same as the const here. So that's what I did up here also. But here I changed the name. This dot dir is going to be called direction in this object. So we have this property direction, but I get the value from this dot dir. So that's why I have to explicitly specify it here. Okay. So that's the make move method. And then we're going to have a method that's called set new pos. We have make the move, so then we can set the new position. And it's going to take in the next move position. So the set new pos, we have this dot pos, it's going to be the next move position. This is the only one for this one. All right. And then we have something more we're going to do in this Pacman class. And that is a method for the key input. So that's the last method that we're going to need in this class. And we're going to call it handle key input. And this one is going to take in the event. We're going to set up this event listener from the index.js file. And it's also going to get the object exist method from the game board class. All right. So I'm going to create a variable here, a let that is called dir. Then I'm going to check which key is pressed. So if e.keycode 
we can get the key code from that pressed button. If it's greater than or equals to 37 and the e dot key code is less than or equals 40, this means that if it's the key up, down, left, and right on the keyboard, we do something because this is the key codes. We can check it out here. I've set this up for us in these directions. We have the code here 37, 38, 39, and 40. These are the key codes for the movement buttons. So we don't want to do anything if it's not those key codes. So I'm going to do the else statement first. So else we just return, we do nothing. But inside of this, if we press the up, down, left, or right on the keyboard, we're going to change the direction. So we set the dir, that's the one that I created up here. And from the directions, we can grab e.key, because this event is going to give us also the name of the key. If we go back to the setup.js, you can see that I call these properties arrow left, arrow up, arrow right, and arrow down. And this is what they called in the event. This is this one here, e.key. So that's why we can grab it from this object. It could also have if statements if you want to do that instead. If you think that this is not that readable or something, you can create if statements for each key. But I'm a little lazy, so I do it on this one-liner instead. That's why. <laughs> All right, so that's the direction, but we don't want to change the direction before we have checked if we, for example, move to the left and the user press up and there's a wall, we don't want to move in that direction because then Pac-Man will stop and try to move upwards and stop again because it collides with a wall. We want Pac-Man to continue to move and you should only be able to change direction when you're at an intersection in the grid. So that's why. So const next move pos equals this dot pos plus dear dot movement. And I'm going to do a check here if it's a wall. So if object exists, we send in the next move pos just as before. And I'm going to check from the object type dot wall. And that will grab the class name, so we check if it's a wall, and then we just return, we do nothing. Otherwise, we can set this dot dir to the new direction. And we will see this in action further in the tutorial. All right, this is the Pac-Man class, and now I won't forget to export it. So export default Pac-Man, save the file, and nothing will happen now because we have to import it in the index.js and use it there. So up here, we import pacman from dot forward slash pacman. And now we can use it. And we have this nice little start game button here, but it doesn't do anything now. So we can set up this event listener just below at the bottom of the index.js file. We can mark it with initialize. game and then we're already grabbing the start button up here so we can reference that one so start button dot add event listener we're going to listen for the click and we're going to call the start game function like that so for example if we console log yeah like that and we press the start game, you can see that it console logs out. Yeah, so it's working. And inside this start game function, we can initialize Pac-Man. But first we can also reset some variables. For example, the game win equals false. This is every time we start a new game. We set the power pill active to false. And we set the score to zero. Then we can also hide the start button when we start a game. So start button, class list, dot add, hide. So I've created this class also in the style file here. You can see somewhere I have hide there. So I'm just setting it to display none. Back to the index.js file and the start game function. 
Okay, we have reset some stuff and we have hidden the start button. Then we're going to create a new game grid each time we start a new game. So from the game board, we call create grid and we give it the level that we imported up at the top in this file. And then we can create Pac-Man. So const Pac-Man equals new Pac-Man. We're going to set the speed to 2. And we're going to put him at the position 287. And that's somewhere here where there's no dots. All right. And then if we save this one, you can see it will not show anything because we also have to put him on the board. So from game board, we have a method that's called add object. That is um, adding a class, actually, as I told you before. So we want to set it on position 287 and we give it an array with classes. So in this case, we have from the object type Pac-Man, capital letters, save it. So if we press the start button, you can see that we have Pac-Man here, but we can't control him now. But what we can do now is also to add the event listener for the controls. So document dot add event listener, and we're going to listen for the key down. And we have an inline error function. We have the event, and then we're going to call Pacman. We have our method that's called handle key input. We give it the event. And from the game board dot, we have object exist. And this one, we also have to bind this one because we're calling this one from a function that is going to set the this to undefined otherwise. So we want to have the this to be game board. Otherwise, this method here in the game board won't work because up here we have this method object exist. You can see that we're using this. And it won't be able to reference this as to be from the game board class if we don't bind it. What you could do also is to create an arrow function of this one instead, and it will work. So you can choose yourself. I'm going to create an arrow function now. So I save this one. Otherwise, you have to type in, remove the explorer, you have to type in bind and give it the game board like this. And this will also work. But I create an arrow function instead. That's it, doing some auto formatting there. And this should be it. Start the game. We're listening for the keys now, but we can't actually see anything happening because we don't have the move algorithm yet. But if we go to the pacman.js and do some console logging here in the handle key input, we can console log the event, for example. You can see that it's working. And here's what I talk, talked about before. You can see here that the key down below here, it has the name arrow right. And that's what I'm setting here in the setup. So I'm using these names here for the keys and that's why I can grab it in this object like I do here. We know that Pac-Man is working, but we have to create the move algorithm for him. Otherwise we can't move him and that's no good because he's just sitting still eating like crazy there and he has nothing to eat. So he must be super hungry right now. So let's continue on and create the move method that we can use for both Pac-Man and the ghosts. So we have this cute little Pac-Man here, but he can't move. So we have to create the move method for him now that we can use to move him around the grid. So we're going to be in the gameboard.js file first. So make sure that you navigate inside of that one, the gameboard class. And just below the rotate div method, we can create another method. And we're going to call this method move character. And that's because we're going to use this move character method for both the ghosts and Pac-Man. Otherwise, we could have called it move Pac-Man if it was just for the Pac-Man. But we're going to reuse this method for both Pac-Man and the ghost. So it's going to take in a character. Like that. And first we can call that should move method that we created in the Pac-Man class. So if character dot should move, 
make sure that you actually call it here also and it will return true or false for us if we should move otherwise we don't have to do anything so if we look at the pacman class here we have this should move method here and we're going to create a method with the exact same name in the ghost class later that's why we can use it here it, it doesn't matter because this method doesn't know if it's pacman or the ghost it just cares that it's a character with the same interface. So if should move, if this is true, then we can do some stuff inside of here. The const, we're going to destructure out. This is ES6 syntax. The next move, pos. And, and yet again, first I'm going to remove the explorer and the direction equals. And from the character, we call the get next move and we're going to give it from this dot object exist dot bind this so we give it the object exist method and i bind it here but as before you can see i did this instead i created an arrow, arrow function so we don't have to bind it actually i can remove this one so we give it that method and if we go back and check the pacman class get next move this is the one that we're calling and you can see that it takes in the object exist here and we're using it here so from the game board class we send in the object exist method from the game board class so we can use it here and as you can see here i return the next move position and the direction and if we look in the game board these are the ones that i just structure out here so this will give us the next move position and the direction all right Remove the explorer again. We're also going to call the make move. So we have the position and the direction, and then we can make the move. The const, yet again, I destructure out classes to remove and classes to add. Equals, and I'm going to call from the character the make move method. And just to be super specific here, I'm going to go back to the Pac-Man and show you that we have the make move method here. So this is the object that I return, and these are the ones that I destructure out. All right, go back to the game board. We now also have the classes to remove and the classes to add. We can use these ones now because we have successfully, hopefully, grabbed those values. So if if character dot rotation and this is what i showed you before also i have this variable in the class so for pacman this is set to true meaning that we will rotate pacman when we change direction in the ghost class it's going to be set to false so it will so it will skip this one so if rotation and the next move position isn't equal to the character position otherwise he will rotate also when we as I told you before, when we're moving, for example, to the left and the user wants to go up, but you can't go up, then it will rotate if we don't do this check also, and that's no good. So first we rotate. So this rotate div, we have this method up here to rotate the div. So we call that one and give it the next move position. And from the character direction and the rotation. So this is of course from the direction object as I showed you before. We also have the rotation property there. And yet again, to be extra specific, I can show you that here. So we have the rotation here. That's the one that I'm grabbing. Because the dear variable in the class is always going to hold one of these objects here. That's why I can grab that value like I do here. All right. So we rotate the div. We also have to rotate back the previous div. Otherwise the ghost will be rotated when they move to that div. So this rotate div, we have the current position, character pos, and we rotate it to zero, All right? So this is the rotation. It's only usable for Pac-Man because this one will be skipped on the ghosts, okay? And then we can actually move the character on the grid. So we do this by remove and adding classes. So this dot remove object 
we have the character position and classes to remove. So we remove those classes from the current position, and then we call this add object. And we have the next move position, and we give it the classes to add. And this will make sure that we apply the classes in the grid also to the moves. So we can visually see the changes on the game board. Then the last thing we have to do is to set the new position. And we have a method that's called set new pos on the character on Pac-Man character dot set new pos. And we give it the next move position and the direction like that. Do some order formatting, but it wasn't needed. Okay, save it. Just see so everything works. We can't move it still. We can remove that console log also from the handle key input. We doesn't we don't need that anymore. Save it. It's gone. Okay, great. Next we're gonna be in the index.js file and first in the start game function. We're going to start an interval that will run our game loop function. So we set the timer and we call set interval. We give it an inline arrow function. We call the game loop that we give Pac Man. For now, we're also going to give it the ghosts later on. And we also give it the global speed. Like that. And we have our empty game loop up here. And for now, we can just console log to see that it works. Works. Save it. Start game. And you can see that it console logs out here. So that's great. All right. We know that it's working. So in the game loop, we have to move Pac Man. So we can call that move character method that we created on game board. So game board dot move character. And we give it Pac-Man, like that. Save it and see what happens. And there he is. Do I dare to try the arrow keys on the keyboard? Yeah, it's working. You can see he does. He, yeah, he don't. He doesn't ro rotate. That's strange. He should rotate. So I have to check this. Why he don't rotate? But he is moving just as he should. That's great, but there's something fishy with the ro rotation. Yeah, I can see it now. I have to have a dollar sign here also, like that. Otherwise, it will not work. So make sure that you have the dollar sign, and inside the curly brackets, you have dig, and then you also add dig. So that's why you have to have the dollar sign here, otherwise, it won't work. Okay, let's try it out again. And as you can see now, he's changing position. But that's no good. He's stopping there. Why is he doing that? On the lair? On the ghost lair? All right. Back to the Pac Man class. Yeah, of course. I also have to check if it's the ghost lair here. I'm just checking for the wall here. We can add in. If it's also an object type of ghost layer, do some auto formatting, save it, try it again, start game. Yeah, and it works. Great! We have a moving Pac Man, and that's super great. But we have no ghosts and we can't eat the dots and anything. We can't actually do anything. So let's continue on to actually add in some ghosts. We're going to start creating the ghosts for the game grid. So let's start with creating a new file in the root folder that we call ghosts, capital G. So ghost.js. And first, just as before, we're going to do some imports. So we import directions and the object type object underscore type capital letters from dot forward slash setup so that's our imports and then we're going to create our class we're going to call it ghost capital g and just as before we have our constructor 
So we have the speed. And if you want, you can also set the default speed like this. But we don't need that now because we're going to set the speed ourselves. And then we're going to have the start position. We're going to have something that I call movement. And the movement is a move function that we can give this class. Because if we provide a move function like this, you can easily change it out for another move function if you want to do that. And for example, create four different move algorithms for the ghosts. You can send them into this movement parameter. And as long as your move algorithms, the functions, has the same interface, it's going to work. All right, then we're going to give it a name also, because these ghosts have their own names. And for this one, we're going to need quite a lot of variables. So we have this dot name that we're going to set the name initially. Then we have this dot movement. I'm going to equals the movement function. Then we have this dot start pause. And this one is going to be the start pause. Then we have this dot pause, and we're going to set this one to the start position also initially. And that's because when Pac-Man eats a ghost, we're going to move them back to the start position. So that's why we also save this start position so that we know where the ghost started. So we can set it back there when Pac-Man eats the ghost. Then we have this dot deer, and we're going to set the direction from the directions. We're going to set it to right to begin with. So arrow right. So this dot speed equals the speed, and this dot timer we set at one to zero, just as in the Pac-Man class. And then we have something that is called this is scared. It's going to be a boolean, and we set it to false so that we can keep track of if the ghost is scared, and that means that Pac-Man has eaten a power pill. And then we have this dot rotation. And that one is going to be false. And this is the one I talked about before. We set this to false so that we don't rotate the ghost when it moves. So these are the variables in this class. And then we're going to create our methods. And these are going to be the same as in the Pac-Man class. So if you want to go full object oriented, you could create a base class that you call, for example, character. And then you can extend this class from that class instead and use the same methods so you don't have to repeat it like this. But as I said, I won't go crazy on full object oriented. So I'm just creating some classes here to show you how you can use them. So first we have the should move method. And just as before, we check if this dot timer equals this dot speed. And if it does, we set this timer zero and then we return true otherwise we add to this dot timer to this dot timer plus plus right this is it for this one we could also return false if we want to do that like so then we have the method get next move and it's going to take in the object exist That we're going to give this one, and this is of course the same one from the game board class. And in this get next move method, we're going to call this movement function that we send in here. And we haven't created this one, so I'm going to create that one now. And we can put this one in its own file. So I create a new file at the root level, and I'm going to call this one uh, ghost moves .js. And this is because I like to separate it out so I can import this and then give this class this move function. And if you want to create more of them, you can do that in this file. So we're going to do some imports here also. Import the directions and the object type. Object underscore type, capital letters. I'm going to remove this Explorer sidebar again. I keep forgetting that one. <laughs> All right. So I import this one from setup just as before. And then we can create our primitive move function. I'm actually going to mark it with primitive, primitive random movement, like that. And then I'm going to export this one because we're going to import it later. So we have to export it, export function. And I call it random movement. 
It's going to take in the position, the direction, and the object exists. So we're going to pass this along from the get next move method in the ghost class. I'll show you this in a little second. I just want to create this move function first so that we have that one to play with in the ghost class. All right. So first we set the let with dir and we set that one to the direction and let the next move pos equals the position plus the dir dot movement. Just as before we grab the movement from this object. And then I'm going to create an array from the directions object keys. So I'm going to grab all the keys and put them in an array. So const keys. And we can do that with object dot keys. And we send in the directions. So this will grab all the keys and put them in an array. And this is because I want to get a random key. So I have to have this array so I can get this random number from the array so we can grab the random key. And then also we don't want the ghosts to move into the walls or into another ghost. So we have to do a check for that. And we're going to use a while loop. So while, and this is because as long as we move into a wall or into a ghost, we're going to calculate the new position for the ghost. So that's why we can use the while loop. So just as we did with Pac-Man, we can use the object exist and check if the next move position is a wall. So object underscore type dot wall, capital letters. And we also want to check if object exist, the next move pos object type is a ghost. So if it's a wall or a ghost, it's going to calculate all of this again. So that's what we're going to do inside of the while loop here. So first we're going to get a random key from the key array. And that's the one that I created up here. And I created it before the while loop because I don't have to create it on every iteration. So const key equals from the keys array. We're going to do some math. So math dot floor. We're going to floor it and math.random. And we multiply it with the keys.length. So this is going to give us a random number in this array. And it's going to grab that element in this array, the keys array. So this is the primitive move. We get this random movement here because each key in this array corresponds to a direction. So it's four of them in this array. And then we can set the new direction. So set the next move. And we have the direction. That's why I set it up here. So we change that one. So it's going to be equal to directions. That's the directions object that we have. So we grab the new key that we calculated and we do it like this. So we grab that properties. So let's say that this key is arrow up and then it's grabbed the arrow up here. And last, we set the next move. So the next move position equals position plus dear dot movement. So this is how we constantly change the direction of the ghost until we have a direction that don't collide with a wall or a ghost. And then we have to return something from this one. So we return an object. We have the next move pos. And we also return the direction just as before, and we set it to dir. And hopefully this is going to work. So this is all there is to it, to the movement, to the ghosts. It's going to calculate the random position until we don't collide with a wall or a ghost. All right. And now we can go back to the ghost class and use this one. So this random movement is the one that we're going to send in when we create the new instance of the ghost. And that one is going to be placed in the movement. So that is also why I now can use this one in the get next move method. I'm going to just structure out the next 
move pause and I'm also going to destructure out the direction equals and I'm going to call this dot movement and this one takes in this dot position this dot dir and the object exist method all right so we hopefully get the next move position and the direction so we can return those so return next move position and the direction so as long as we have the same interface it doesn't matter what move function we have as long as that move function return the next move position and the direction it will work then so that's the get next move method then we're also going to make the move. So we have the make move method. Const classes to remove equals. And we have an array just as before. We specify the classes that we want to remove. From the object type, we want to remove the ghost. We also want to remove scared. Because if we have set the class that this ghost is scared, we have to remove that one. And we also want to remove the class this.name, because we're setting the name as a class on the div also. All right, I'm going to end it with a semicolon. And then the next one is actually going to be a let, and I'm going to explain that in a second. So we have let classes to add. It's going to equal an array and from the object type. We're going to add ghost and this dot name. And why is this a let? And that's because we also have to check if this ghost is scared. And if it's scared, we're going to add that class also. So if this dot is scared, then we have the classes to add. That's the let up here. So classes to add equals. And we create a new array. We're going to spread the classes to add. This is ES6 syntax again. And then we're going to add from the object type scared, like that. And end it with a semicolon. If you wonder why I don't have more space here, that's because I want to have this insanely big font so that you guys could see what I type in. But it's a little inconvenient when the rows get this long, because I have to scroll to show you this here. And it's a little bit unpractical to code like this actually, but it's important that you see what I type. So that's why. <laughs> and I also want to have the game board visible here all the time now for this tutorial. We have to return something. So we return just as in the Pac-Man class, we return classes to remove, and we also return classes to add in an object like this. Then we just have one more method to create in this class, and that's the set new pos. It's gonna take in the next move pos and the direction like that. So this dot pos is gonna equal the next move position and this dot dir is gonna equal the direction. As you can see here, if you remember from when we created the Pac-Man class, we have the exact same methods, and that means that they have the same interface. And as I said before, if you want to go crazy on object-oriented stuff, you can create the base class that's called, for example, character, that has the methods that are going to be the same. They don't look exactly the same now in here, but you can do it probably with a base class and then you extend this class with the base class instead. So you don't have to repeat yourself that much. But I won't do it in this tutorial, all right? So this is the ghost class and we also have the movement for the ghost. So that's great. So let's move back to the index.js file. And the first thing we're gonna do is to import our move function. So import random movement from dot forward slash ghost moves like that and then we also have to import the ghost class and i just remember just as before in the ghost class we also have to export this one so export default ghost save it and move back to the index.js file and now we can import it so import ghost 
Chrome dot forward slash ghost. All right. So we have to implement the ghosts also and use them in our game before they will show up here, of course. So down in the start game function that we have, we're going to create the ghosts. And just after where we create Pac-Man, we can do that. And as we have four of them, I'm going to create them in an array. It's going to be easier to handle. So const ghosts equals an array. At the first position, we have a new ghost. And I'm going to set the speed to 5 on this one and select the position 188. That's going to be here in the top. So I'm going to place them diagonally over here. You can place them however you want, but I think that's neat because they're going to move right as the first move. So they won't move into each other and collide them. And then I give them the random movement function and also going to give them the name. And we have the name in the object type dot. Blinky. That's going to be the class name. All right. Then we can just copy this one and paste it in three times. And I'm going to give them uh, four, three, and two in speed so that they have some difference in their movement. And this one is going to go at the position 209. And this one, 230. And this one is going to be 251. And that will place them diagonally in the ghost layer and we also have to change these class names here this one is going to be pinky and this cute little ghost is going to be inky and the last no <laughs> and the last one and that's cool i think <laughs> because he's called clyde these ones are quite similar but this one is called clyde so yeah that's clyde okay i have an error Unexpected token, uh, all right, and that's because this is an array, so there should be commas at the end here instead. Save it. And as you can see, it won't work still because we're not placing the ghosts on the grid. So we have to move them also because otherwise they won't show up. So we have the ghosts and our start game function is actually finished now. So we move up to the game loop. So just below where we move Pac-Man, we have our ghosts, and as this is an array and we want to move all four of them, we have to loop with a for each loop in this case. So we have a ghost and an inline arrow function, and from the game board, I'm going to call the move character and give it the ghost. And this is the exact same method as we use with Pac-Man. And this works, as I said, because we have the same interface, it's the same methods on Pac-Man and Ghost. So that's why we can send them along to this move character in the game board and it will work. Do some auto formatting and it added these parentheses here. Okay. Save it and see if this works. So let's start the game. It doesn't work. Yeah, and that's because I'm not sending in the ghosts to the game loop. So we have to change that one where we set the interval in the start game. So give it the ghosts also and save it and let's try it again and it still won't work position is not defined and ghost moves okay let's check that out move to the ghost moves and it's at row 19 Postion. i have a typo it should be position save it and try it again and i have another error okay in the ghost js40 Classes to remove and classes to add. Classes to add is not defined. Yeah, and I have another typo. I forgot the S. Hopefully you didn't do that. This is embarrassing. <laughs> so, there we have our ghosts. They move nicely. But, as you can see, nothing happens when we collide with the ghosts. So, we have to fix that also. We're going to do some collision detection with the ghosts. Okay, we have our ghosts and we have Pac-Man and we can move on the game board, but we can't collide with something. So we're going to create the collision detection now. And we already scaffolded out this function that's called check collision and it's in the index.js file. So we're going to create this function now. 
So the first thing we have to do is to calculate which ghost Pac-Man collide with. And we can do that by using the find method that we can use on an array in JavaScript. So we create a const collided ghost equals, and we have the ghosts, and we call dot find on that one. So then we have a ghost, and we have an inline arrow function, and we can compare the pacman dot pos if it equals the ghost dot pos, like so. And this will give us the ghost that we collide with, otherwise it will give us undefined. And this means that we can check if collided ghost, and inside of here we can write our logic when we collide with a ghost. We also have to check if Pac-Man has eaten a power pill, because if he has eaten a power pill, he will eat the ghost. So we have another if statement, if Pac-Man dot power pill, like so. And we can also create the else statement already now. So that is, if Pac-Man didn't eat the power pill, then he will obviously die. But let's deal with this first. So if Pac-Man has eaten a power pill, he will eat the ghost. So we have to remove the ghost from the div grid or game board. So in our game board, we can call dot remove object. And we have the collided ghost and dot pos. So we have the position of the collided ghost. And then we have the array. And we're going to remove from object underscore type. We get the ghost. And also from object underscore type, we get the scared because we want to remove the scared class also. And then we remove the collided ghost dot name. All right. Then we also want to reset the position on the ghost. So collided ghost dot pos equals collided ghost dot start pos. So that's why we had this variable in the ghost class so we can move it back to the start position when the ghost dies. Then we also want to give Pac-Man some credit. So we give him a score plus equals of 100. So he gets 100 points for eating a ghost. So that's when Pac-Man eats the ghost. And then we have the else statement here, and that is when Pac-Man dies. So we're going to remove Pac-Man from the game board. So game board dot remove object. So we have the Pac-Man dot pos. And we have the class from object type dot Pacman. So we remove Pacman. Also, we want to rotate back the div, otherwise, the ghosts will be rotated when they move to that div. So from the game board, we rotate div Pacman dot pos. And we rotate it to zero. And then we call the game over function. We give it the Pac-Man and the game grid. Do some auto formatting, and this should be it. This is our check collision. Move down to the game loop. So here, where we move Pac-Man, we're going to do a collision check. So check collision. Just after when we have moved Pac-Man, we give it the Pac-Man and the ghosts. And we're also going to do another collision check when we have moved the ghosts. Check collision, Pac-Man and ghosts. And you could, of course, somehow integrate this in one collision detection. But I do it like this because this is a fairly small game. So it's quite simple to just call it two times instead. Because the Ghost and Pac-Man don't move in sync. So that's why. So we check it when we have moved Pac-Man. And then we move the Ghost and we do another collision check to be sure that we cover all the cases. So let's see if it works. We won't be able to see if the Power Pill version works yet. But we can see if we can collide with a ghost. Yeah, you can see that Pac-Man disappears, but we don't have our game over function, so that's why. So we have the game over function up here. We scaffold that one out earlier also. And we have to do some stuff here when it's game over. First of all, we're going to remove the event listener that we created for the keys. Document, remove, event listener. And we had the key down and the inline arrow function. I think something like this. Pacman dot handle key input. And we give it the event. And we have the game board dot object exist dot bind game board. It has to look exactly the same 
as we created it, and I think this is the one. Yeah, I didn't have to bind one there because I had an arrow function instead. So we don't have to do this one here. Then we also want to show the game status. So from the game board, we call the show game status method. And we give it the game win variable. And right now we're not setting that one anywhere. So we're going to do that later if we have won the game. Then we also want to clear the interval. That's the game loop, clear interval. And we have that one in the timer up here. So we clear that one out. So we stop the game loop. And then we also want to show the start button. So start button dot class list dot remove hide. Do some auto formatting. I guess I have some typo. Yeah. Unexpected token. And that's because I have to remove the semicolon and do some auto formatting, save it, see what happens. Yeah, come on. Yeah, you can see that it shows game over and it works. So we collide with the ghost and the Pac-Man disappears when we collide with the ghost. So that works. That's great. All right, we're going to finish our game loop function in this part. So let's start off by letting Pac-Man eat dots. So check if Pac-Man eats a dot. So we can use the object exist that we created in the game board to check when a pac when Pac-Man moves to a cell if that cell contains the class name dot. So if game board dot object exist we give it the pacman dot position and we check from the object type if it's a dot like that if it is a dot we're going to do some stuff here we're going to remove the dot so from the game board remove object we have the pacman position again and we have an array and we're going to from the object type grab the dot so we remove the dot from that position and then we also want to remove a dot from the dot count that we created in the array because in that variable we keep track on how many dots there are on the grid. So from the game board dot dot count dot count we remove one dot. So game board dot dot count minus minus that will remove one dot from that variable. And then we also want to add some score and we're going to give Pac-Man 10 points when he hits a dot, like that. Okay, let's see if this works. Let's start the game. And as you can see, he eats dots. And that's nice. So the next thing we're going to do is to make him eat the power pill. So check if Pac-Man eats a power pill. All right. And just as before, we check with an if statement if, and from the game board object exists, we check the pacman.position, and we check if from the object type we eat the pill. All right. And then from the game board dot remove object, we're going to remove the power pill. So we have the pacman.pos and we have an array for this one. So we have the object type dot pill, capital letters. And I realized I maybe should have done this on array also so that they look the same, but yeah. Well, I've done it like this now, so it has to be that way. But just be careful so that you create an array here on the remove object. And the object exists shouldn't have an array because it can only check one class at a time. But with the remove object, we can remove multiple classes if we want to do that. Okay, so we remove the power pill. Then we want to set the pacman dot power pill to true because now Pacman is angry. He's gonna eat the ghost, and we have to tell our game that. And we're gonna give him some score. 
plus equals 50, you get 50 for that one. So the power pill is going to be active for 10 seconds, and you can change that one up here. Yeah, I have it uh, up here, the power pill time. You can change this one if you don't want to have it set to 10 seconds. So I'm going to create that timer. And we do it just below the score here. The first thing we have to do is to clear out the old timer. If you eat the power pill, meanwhile, you still have the power from another pill. So we clear that out, clear, timeout. And we have the power pill timer in the power pill timer variable. So we make sure to clear that one out. Then we set the new one, power pill timer, camel case equals set timeout. And we have an inline arrow function. I'm going to set the pacman.powerpill to false. So we set it back to false after 10 seconds. So we have a coma. And then we provide it with a power pill time. Do some auto formatting. What we've done here is we clear out the old timer and then we set the new timer. And the only thing we do with this timer after the 10 seconds is that we set the pacman.powerpill to false again. So we set that one back. Save it. So let's see if this works. Yeah, he eats a power pill and that's great. But you can see that the ghost should be blue because they're scared now. So we have to set that one also. We can do that below this one here. Change ghost scare mode depending on power pill. So we just want to run this once. We don't want to run it on every iteration in the game loop. So if Pacman dot power pill. If that one is not equal to that little flag that we have up here in the variables, we have this power pill active. It's set to false now. So that means that we can check against that one. So we check if the power pill is active. So if Pacman dot power pill doesn't equal to the power pill active, then we can do something. And this means that it will only run this once and don't run it every time on each game iteration in the loop. So we set the power pill active to the Pac-Man power pill, Pac-Man dot power pill. And this will make it, if this one is false, this one is going to be true. And if this is true, it's going to be false. So that's how it switches between them. All right. And then on each ghost, we want to set that they're scared. So we have the ghosts array for each. And we have a ghost. And we're going to set the ghost dot is scared variable to equal the pacman dot power pill. Like that. Do some auto formatting and it adds this stuff here. Okay, that's okay. So this is how it works. We check if pacman dot power pill doesn't equal the power pill active. So if this one is true, this one is going to be false. And then we set this one to true. So it's going to be true the next iteration. And then we also change ghost is scared to the Pac-Man power pill. And the same goes if the Pac-Man power pill is false. So it checks against this flag here all the time. And this flag is only because I don't want to run this on each iteration. So save it. Let's see if it works. Ah. No, I have some error here. Classes to add is not defined at ghost js38. Let's check that one out. Ghost38. If this is scared, classes to add. Yeah, I have a typo there again. I forgot the S. So it should be classes to add. And hopefully you notice that when I created this one. So you don't do the same typo. And I actually, this is quite usual for me. I forgot the S a lot of times when I create tutorials, and that's very annoying. I try to think about it, but it happens all the time. So I save it. We're going to try this one out again. Start game. And it works. So that's super great. Let's see so that they turn back yeah, to the norm normal state. 
and we eat the power pill, great, it works. So here you have it, you see that if you've forgotten S, it will ruin the complete game. So that's coding in a nutshell. Well, 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 we have to live with that one. So that's the power pill. We have to do a few more things here. Below this one, check if all dots have been eaten. All right, if game board dot dot count, if that one equals to zero, we know that we have won the game and all dots have been eaten. So we set the game win to true like that. And we call the game over with the Pac-Man and the ghosts. And I could check this one now, but I'm actually confident that this will work. I don't want to play through the complete game to see if it works and let you watch me play the game. So you have to try this out yourself. The last thing we have to do is that we want to show the score in the scoreboard. Show the score. So we have the score table, we grabbed that before, and we set the inner HTML to the score. Do some auto formatting and save it and see what we've got. And you can see that we see the score now, and this is actually the fully working game. Let's see that we can eat the ghost also. Yeah, and you can see it moved back to the ghost layer, so it works. So this is the fully working game. There will probably be some minor bugs in it um, because there's always edge cases and stuff like that. And when you create a tutorial like this, it would be too long if you should cover all of this stuff. So you have to fix them yourself if there's some bugs in it, but I think it works fairly good now. And the last thing we're gonna do is to add some cool sound effects to this game. All right, we're gonna finish this game now and we're gonna add some sound effects lastly. But before that, I see that I have some strange thing going on here in the start game function. Hopefully it didn't do this. It seems like I created a coma instead of a semicolon and that will make it format it very strangely when you auto format it. So I'm gonna remove this once and make sure that I have, that I have a semicolon at the end of this once where I reset the power pill active and the score and do some order for manual and it seems to work great. So we're gonna add some sounds now to the game. And the first thing we have to do is to import the sounds. So I'm gonna do that below here. I mark it with sounds and I'm gonna import all of the sounds. It's gonna be five of them. So we have the sound dot, that's when Pac-Man eats a dot from dot forward slash sounds and it's called munch.wav. All right, so I can copy this one and I'm gonna paste it in four times, like that. And this one is gonna be called sound pill. And that's when Pac-Man eats the power pill. And the name of that waveform is pill. And I have the sound game start. And this one is called game underscore start. And we have the sound game over. And it's called, it's called the death actually. And the last one is gonna be sound ghost. And it's called eat underscore ghost. So that's the sounds. Then I want a function to use when to play the sounds. So I'm going to add that one in here. So I can tag it with audio like that. So I create a new function, play audio, and I'm going to give it an, a sound. We can call it audio. Const sound effect equals new audio and we give it the audio that we send into this function so we have the sound effect and then we have to play it so from the sound effect we play it like this sound effect dot play we call that we call that method there so that's a function for us to play the audio and then we have to place the audio here 
depending on what we do in the game. So for example, the game over function, it's going to play audio and we send in the sound game over to that one. Then we move down. Yeah, and here in the check collision, we're going to play a sound when Pac-Man eats a ghost. So here, just at the top in the if statement, when Pac-Man has eaten a power pill, we play audio and the sound ghost like that. Then we move down in the game loop where Pac-Man eats a dot. We're going to play a sound. The play audio sound dot like that and when he eats the power pill we're also gonna play a sound play audio whoops play audio and we're gonna send in the sound pill and then we have one more to go and that's when we start the game so down in the start game Play audio, sound, game start, do some auto formatting and save it and see if it works. Yeah! Yeah, you can see that it works and that's great. I love those sound effects. Yeah, it's working. I think the sound does a lot to this game, actually. It's a lot more retro feeling when you have those sounds. All right. So this is one way you can create a Pac-Man game. There's a lot of them, of course. You can make it in probably a thousand ways or more. But this is one way you can create a Pac-Man game. And this has hopefully been as fun for you watching as it's been for me creating it. It was sure a pleasure creating this one. So I hope you enjoyed it and make sure to visit my channel Weben Falk at YouTube and subscribe to my channel if you like my stuff. I put up a lot of stuff like this and other stuff, many React things and also Gatsby and I also have Svelte stuff now. So if you want to support me, go to my channel and subscribe and hopefully see you in another one.